today we're going to be talking about hammer toes. A hammer toe is an abnormal band at the proximal interphalangeal joint of the lesser digits. Today I'm going to be talking about the three main types of hammer toe deformities. Here we go. I'm going to be talking about why certain foot types get hammer toe deformities and how we can tell why each hammer toe deformity begins. The three main origins of hammer toe deformities are flexor stabilization, flexor substitution, and extensor substitution. By far the most common type of hammer toe origins are flexor stabilization and this is most commonly seen in the pronated foot. Overpronation leads to hammer toe deformities. Overpronation occurs when the posterior tibial muscle is unable to effectively resupinate the foot. In order to resupinate the foot, the flexor hallucis longus and the flexor digitorum longus has to fire earlier and longer in order to resupinate the foot. The flexor tendons which attempt to resupinate the foot end up overpowering the inner osseous muscles and we see what's called excessive gripping. We see the hammering and the clawing of the lesser digits and the adducto varus deformity of the fourth and fifth toes. Flexor stabilization is the most commonly seen type of hammer toe deformity. Key points about flexor stabilization are the excessive gripping of the lesser digits and the adducto varus deformity of the fifth toe. The least common type of hammer toe deformity is flexor substitution. We most commonly see this type of hammer toe deformity when there is a weak triceps surai. Flexor substitution occurs when the triceps surai muscle group is unable to effectively plantar flex the foot during propulsion. Again, this causes muscles of the posterior tibial tendon, flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, to fire earlier and longer in order to plantar flex. The third most common hammer toe deformity in origin is extensor substitution. This is most commonly seen in a cavus foot type during the swing phase. During the swing phase of gait, if the tibialis anterior tendon is unable to dorsiflex the foot, we see the extensor digitorum longus and extensor hallucis longus firing earlier and longer and with greater force, which can cause hammer toe deformities to form. This causes the extensor tendons to gain a mechanical advantage over the lumbricals. This overpowering by the extensor digitorum longus over the lumbricals causes the deformity. It is essential to be able to look at the three different types of hammer toe deformities and be able to recognize each origin. Let's look at some questions. Which of the following hammer toe deformity is due to a weak triceps surai? The answer is flexor substitution. Remember that a weak triceps surai causes the deep posterior compartments to fire earlier and longer, leading to the hammer toe deformity. What should we expect to see during the gait cycle of extensor substitution? The answer is cavus foot on the swing phase of gait. Remember that during the swing phase of gait, the tibialis anterior tendon 
must fire in order to clear the ground. If it is unable to fire, the extensor digitorum longus and extensor hallucis longus have to fire earlier and longer, which can lead to extensor substitution hammer toe deformity. Which of the following is the most common origin of hammer toe deformity? The answer is flexor stabilization. Remember that flexor stabilization is almost always seen in the pronated foot, which is a very common deformity. We see excessive gripping, overpowering of the interossei, and this occurs when the posterior muscle group is unable to effectively resupinate the foot. We see that the foot compensates with the flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus, which fire earlier and longer and with greater force to resupinate the foot. Thank you so much for walking and so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this.